Well, hello for you, and welcome to our topic of rational functions. Our goal today, I understand how to find the asymptotes and end behavior of a function that is a quotient of two linear expressions. Uh, what does all that mean? Well, it means that we're going to have some line divided by another line, and that is going to give us a, another form of the creeper graph that you guys are so used to, um, except in this case, now, uh, our horizontal asymptote is going to be moved somewhere other than zero. So we're going to take a look at finding where the horizontal asymptote is and how to examine things like end behavior on this one. So a, the vertical asymptote and the behavior at the asymptote. So a vertical asymptote occurs when the denominator is zero. That hasn't changed from the last time we took a look at this. So if we're going to take a look at this particular function, f at x equals 2x minus 3 over 5x plus 5, um, we need to set the denominator 0. So um, therefore, 5x plus 6 has to equal 0. x is going to equal constant term over coefficient opposite sign. So negative six-fifths or negative one and one-fifth is our uh, asymptote. And now we're going to take a look at the behavior at that asymptote. So we have to let it get close. And remember this is uh, negative one and one-fifth. We're going to let that get close and it might help if you knew what that was as a decimal. It's easier to think of this as negative 1.2, and then we can think of numbers that are very, very close to negative 1.2. So um, we want to say as x approaches negative 1.2, but we're going to approach it from numbers that are slightly smaller. So we're going to say from below or from, in this case, the left. So as x approaches negative 1.2 from the left. Well, how's that going to affect it? Let's think of actually subbing in a number that's just a little bit bigger than negative 1.2. Um, if I sub in a number, uh, let's say f at negative 1.25, uh, let's think how that affects the numerator. Um, so 2 times negative 1.25 minus 3 over 5 times negative 1.25 plus 6. Now we know at the asymptotes that our function is either going to approach negative infinity or positive infinity. So we don't really need to know exactly what this evaluates to. We only re really need to know what sign it is. So if I do 2 times this negative value, I get a negative number. And when I subtract something from a negative number, it's still going to be negative. So this numerator is still going to be negative. Now the denominator is a little bit trickier because the denominator, if I actually subbed in negative 1.2, the denominator would evaluate to zero. That's why we have to sub in something that's a little bigger, a little smaller. So in this case, um, 5 times uh, 1.25 in the negative is negative 6.25, and then when we add 6 to it, it's still negative. So the bottom is negative which means the overall value of the function is going to be positive because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So what that actually means is as x approaches negative 1.2 from the left, uh, y approaches positive infinity. And now we have to think of that in the other direction as x approaches negative 1.2 from the right, we have to figure out is y going to go to positive or negative infinity. Now normally, um, since it's a creeper graph, if we figure out one, the other ones probably go in the other direction. But let's have a quick look. f at uh, negative 1.15 is slightly to the right of negative 1.2. 
and so we do 2 times negative 1.25 minus 3 again a negative number subtract a negative number that's going to or subtract a number that's going to be a negative answer so the numerator is going to be negative and the denominator whoops different color here the denominator uh, 5 times negative that should have been 1 5 1.15 plus 6 this time this is going to be a little bit bigger we'll actually plug it in 5 times 1.15 in the negative gives us a negative 5.75. 5. So when I add 6 to it, it's going to bring me into the positive section. So now that means that a negative divided by a positive is going to be y approaching negative infinity. So that's the behavior at the vertical asymptote. Now let's have a look at the end behavior and this is going to be a little bit different than we had before so I'm going to go and it's 2x minus 3 over 5x plus 6 2x minus 3 over 5x plus 6 f at x equals okay now we have to imagine x getting very large like positive infinity so just a really big number uh, or something like positive 100 um, however here's a problem um, we know that we want it to tend to some number here and if I think of x getting really really big like being infinite what we just end up with is infinity over infinity and infinity over infinity no matter what you might think it's not one infinity divided by itself is not one so we have to do something else here so that when I when I think of x going to infinity it actually makes a little bit more sense and we're gonna do one little adjustment to this thing and then think of x going to infinity now here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by 1 over x now I hope you agree with me that if I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same thing I'm not actually changing my function I'm just changing the way it looks because when you multiply top and bottom by the same thing you're really just multiplying by one now here's how it changes how it looks this thing has to distribute through the top so what this becomes is 2x divided by x so the x's divide away so it's just plain 2 and then I have minus 3 divided by x when I multiply that out and I have to do the same thing on the bottom again uh, 5 and then plus 6 over x now let's think of x tending to infinity if x goes to infinity this gets to be say infinity and anytime I have a constant over infinity my answer is going to be 0 now just think of that if I as if I let the bottom go to infinity say I had 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 and 1 over 3 is 0 0.333 repeated and 1 over 4 is 0 0.25 as the bottoms getting bigger this number is getting closer and closer and closer to 0 so it stands to reason that when we put the biggest number in there which we can't actually get to because we can't get to infinity um, we're actually going to be at 0 so this is generally considered any constant divided by infinity is 0 so that means that as x goes to infinity and it doesn't matter whether it goes to positive infinity or negative infinity as x tends to positive infinity or negative infinity it doesn't matter um, these things are gonna go away so I'm gonna lose that and I'm gonna lose that which means that our y's are going to tend to two-fifths so as x tends to positive or negative infinity y tends to two-fifths which means that this is our horizontal asymptote therefore y equals two-fifths is a horizontal asymptote and so that is our end behavior as x goes to infinity okay carrying on we have our vertical asymptote now we have our horizontal asymptote 
What else do we want here? The intercepts. Now I've just copied this down here so that I can I know what we're talking about. So the intercepts, we find those exactly the same way as we did before. Um, for the x-intercept, for the x-int, we are going to set y equals 0. So if y equals 0, we go 0 equals 2x minus 3 over 5x plus 6. Now in this case, it's there is going to be uh, an intercept because if the numerator is 0, the whole fraction is 0. So in order for the whole fraction to be 0, all I need to do is get a numerator of 0. And so therefore, 2x minus 3, which is the numerator, must equal 0. And then x equals, that's going to be 3 halves. So x equals 3 halves is our y-intercept. So our x-intercept, uh, to get our x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. Or, oh, we, already, we just did that. Let's not do it again. To get our y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0. And this one's pretty straightforward. To get our y-intercept, uh, f at x is going to equal 2 times 0 minus 3 over 5 times 0 plus 6, which is going to be negative 3 over 6, because these are going to go away, so I'm just left with those, which is equal to negative 1 half when we reduce it to lowest terms. Okay, now here's what I want you to want you to see though, if this at the top, if we let this be our general form, ax plus b, is that what I let it be over here? Yeah, ax plus b over cx plus d. If this was ax plus b, then this here was just b over a. Uh, of course, that negative there meant that this switched signs too. So this is just actually just negative b over a. And um, to get the y-intercept, let's look at this one. Negative 3 over 6 was just this. If this was ax minus plus b over cx plus d, then this negative 3 over 6 came from here, which is just b over d. That's kind of nifty. Um, was there anything we could have looked at at the other two things now that we're looking at it there? Well, this one here we got from the bottom being 0. So this was just um, negative d over c. Came straight from the original function. Both those questions, or sorry, both those numbers came from this straight from the original function. Uh, so we must be able to do something here too. It was two fifths, it was these coefficients here. So it was a over C. So this here turned out to be A over C. Okay. What else does it ask us? Domain and range. Uh, domain. Domain is X is any real number but not where the horizontal or the vertical asymptote was. So not where the denominator was 0, which was negative 6 fifths. x does not equal negative 6 over 5. Range. y is any real number such that y does not equal, well, it doesn't equal where the vertical asymptote, or sorry, the horizontal asymptote was, and the horizontal asymptote, if you remember, was these two numbers right here, so two-fifths, so y does not equal two-fifths. And looking down, sketch the function. All right, let's put it all together. If we sketch the function, um, we're going to start with the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So, these were the two asymptotes, negative 6 fifths or negative 1.2, so 
So this one here, let's just plot it down. And this is x equals negative 6 fifths and 2 fifths. So 2 fifths is barely above the axis here. It's actually 0.4. So you say y equals 2 fifths. Now let's plot our intercepts. Our two intercepts were at 3 halves, our x-intercept positive 3 halves. So our x-intercept here, right about here, 3 halves is 1 and a half. And we're going to label it as 3 halves comma 0. And our y-intercept was at negative 1 half, so down here at the point negative 1 half or 0, negative 1 half. Doop. 0, negative 1 half. Alright, now let's do this. Obviously it's going to go like this because that's the only way that we can hit those two things and since I know it's a creeper graph I know that it has to do be symmetrical over here. And if I wanted to, I could actually reflect these points over here and find out where they, where they are on the other side. But I didn't ask you to do that. Now let's talk about the asymptotes. Um, over here, this t said, where did we go here? Um, our end behavior, as x approached the vertical asymptote, from the right we went to positive infinity. Let's see if our graph says that. As we approach, sorry that was the left. As we approach from the left it goes to positive infinity. So did we get it that right? As it approaches from the left it goes to positive infinity. Good. And as it approached from the left, it, right it went to negative infinity. And as we approach this way it goes to the horizontal asymptote and that way it goes to the horizontal asymptote. Now we didn't talk about whether it was going to be above or below the horizontal asymptote. Okay. We just said as it goes to positive infinity or negative infinity, it's going to two-fifths. Well, how do we know if it goes above or below? Well, I'm going to go back over here and talk about is it above, is it above or below the horizontal asymptote? How do you tell? Sub in a big number. If you're going to go to, if you want to know how it goes to positive infinity, sub in, let's say, 100. If you want to go for negative infinity, let's sub in, say, negative 100. Okay, we're going to sub that in and see whether it should be above or below. So let's sub in 100 here. So 2 times 100 minus 3 over 5 times 100 plus 6. That evaluates to, okay, 200 minus 3 is 197 and 500 plus 6 is 506. Now what we have to see is this number greater than or less than two-fifths. If it's greater than two-fifths, then the asymptote should be above. If it's less than two-fifths, the asymptote should be below. And of course two-fifths is 0.4. So let's actually do that division and say 197 divided by 506 is smaller than 0.4. So this is 197 over 506 is less than 2 fifths. So therefore, as x tends to, and this was a big positive number, so as x tends to this positive infinity, y tends to 2 fifths from below. And we could do that again with a negative number, 2 times negative 100 minus 3 divided by 5 times 100 plus 6 equals, um, that should be negative 100. 
So that's going to be negative 200 minus 3 is negative 203. And on the bottom we have negative 500 plus 6 is going to be negative 494. Now when I divide those two numbers, uh, I'm obviously going to get a positive answer. So 203 divided by 494 is just slightly bigger than 2 fifths, slightly bigger than 0.4. So negative 203 divided by negative 494 is bigger than 2 fifths. So that means as x tends to negative infinity, y tends to 2 fifths from above. Now, did that match the graph that we drew? Let's have a quick look. Um, when it went to, let's look here, when it went to positive infinity, it should be below. As it goes to negative infinity, it should be above. So as it goes to positive infinity, it's below the asymptote. As it goes to negative infinity, it's above the asymptote. So that checks. So here's our sketch, and it checked all of the things that we had. Now the last thing is just a summary of what I talked about before. The vertical asymptote, it occurs, is negative d over c. Um, because it occurs when the denominator is 0. And if the denominator is 0, remember, constant term over coefficient, change the sign. So the reason for that being negative d over c is the denominator must be 0. Now, how about the other one, horizontal asymptote. Remember, we multiplied top and bottom by 1 over x. And if we multiply top and bottom by 1 over x, we get a plus b over x over c plus d over x. And now as we let x go to infinity, these things are going to go to 0, so we're left with a over c. And so there's just a quick explanation there. Multiply by 1 over x and let x tend to infinity. Remember, 1 over x equals 0. Now, the x-intercept occurs when the numerator, or when we sub 0 in for a, or sorry, when the numerator is 0. So when the numerator is 0, constant term over coefficient, change the sign. Constant term over coefficient, change the sign. So let f at x equals 0. If the numerator is 0, the whole fraction is 0. So we let the numerator be 0. And our y-intercept, we let x be 0. And if x is 0, that disappears, so all we're left with is b over d. And so we let x be 0, and all we're left with is b over d. And that concludes this lesson.